and his faithfulness upon our lives. We are so grateful that the Lord has given us yet another night. We are late with some few minutes, but as, as I've already said, I'm never harassed with the time uh, because uh, God is in control. Uh, if you can hear my voice, kindly let us come on board. Let us come on board. We are on our five days. Today is our third day. If you can hear my voice, kindly come on board. Let us uh, join up together and hear what the Lord has in store for us this night. I'm very encouraged by people who are never ashamed uh, to support our ministries. They don't uh, support in the secret. They do it openly. Happy to see all of you, Nashua Constance. Happy to see you. Amen. Happy to see you, Mamporin. Kaidre, as you come on board, let us share the broadcast. Might to share the word of God with other people. Let them come on board also. Uh, I have apologized. We are late with some 15 minutes, but I'm never harassed with the time. I've been setting the gadgets today. Uh, Virginia Wanjiro Kaidre, I cannot bring you on board, as I told you yesterday, because uh, the broadcast is being recorded by so many other gadgets so that it can be aired to other, uh, other platforms. So I'm not able to bring anybody on board uh, unless when we are finishing so that we can uh, share the world. Yes, I'm happy that I've been able to set the gadgets on my own today. Wow, glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Mom, Mom Pauline, can you see me properly? Today I've done the, the setting. <laughs> I've been waiting. And then today I've, done, I've set the gadgets. Oh, I've qualified. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God is faithful. Amen. As you come on board, kindly share the broadcast. I encourage me that Ginger Room, but kindly share the broadcast. Let us reach out to other people. I'm also now busy doing that, uh, sharing the, the broadcast uh, by the grace of God so that we are able to reach out uh, to as many people as we can. Yes, it is perfect. You look good. Thank you. I'm happy for that. Amen. I'm also sharing the word right now. Kaidre, let us share the word around. Wake somebody up. Let us share the word. One person has shared. I'm also now sharing. Let us share the word around by the grace of God. Let us reach out to as many people as we can by the grace of God. Hallelujah. I'm happy that the Lord has given us an opportunity to gather this night. I have a word for us from the heart of God, and I know the word will edify the church by the grace of God. My brethren, uh, it is good to know the time that we are in so that we don't just live. It is not time to just live. It is not an opportunity to just do things. It is not a season to just dress. It is not a season to just say anything. Season has shifted and uh, it is the will of God that we be found doing what we are meant to do as sons of God in this hour. So whenever you, you are representing the kingdom of God, I would want us to know, including myself, they am a part of the body, that uh, God has an agenda. God has an agenda for the season and God has a purpose for the season. Uh, our work is to pray for them that have fallen off from the grace, but we we cannot concentrate there. You know, you should be careful, even as you help them. You know what the Bible says? That even as you help uh, them that have fallen, uh, even as you rebuke them or correct them, you should be careful, lest they cause you also to fall. Hallelujah. So let us concentrate right. Let us focus right. That is a word I've been hearing from the voice of God for quite some time, that our focus, um, our focus, I'm also sharing, see each other, uh, I'm also sharing here. Uh, to, to other platforms so that we can uh, reach to as many people as we can by the grace of God. I'm waiting for us to come on board. Uh, we are ready with some few minutes, but despite that, I'll be able to uh, to deliver what the Lord has in store for us. 
kindly if you are able to follow us in whichever platform uh, on uh, you know the the platforms of our ministries we are live in all of them by the grace of god and we are very excited by what the lord has done we are happy that the lord has a demand for us in this hour and our you know our desire is to be able to accomplish the mission of god in our generation by the grace of god god is looking for you know uh, for a people who are going to co-work with him because the bible says paul is saying that we are co-workers with him we are co-workers with him kaidre let each one of us be found to be a faithful laborer, to be a faithful laborer in the vineyard of the Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank God I've been able to share, so now I'm good to go by the grace of God. Amen. I welcome all of us tonight. Happy to see all of you. Happy to see all of you. Kaidre, share the broadcast. Let us wake people up, them that are in daytime or evening hours in their countries. Kaidre, tell somebody to sit back and uh, hear the word of the Lord tonight by the grace of God. Kaidre, don't come on board alone. Reach out to somebody tonight. Make sure you have come on board with somebody. Uh, we are in, the, in our day number three of the five days that the Lord has summoned us so that he can tell us what are his demands for this hour and these demands are you know what is written in the word of god just to remind us what is the uh, what is the demand of god in this generation you know the bible says that god is the same yesterday today and forever he does not change i know situations and circumstances may have changed in your life but god remains the same he is the same yesterday today and forever hallelujah i love the scripture that says you know, God is telling the children of Israel, besides me, there is none other. Oh my God, I am the Lord, the God of your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And besides me, there is no any other. Hallelujah. So we, we, you know, our focus is him. We have a father who does not fail us. Even I told you yesterday, even when you see, I see things are not favoring you, like what happened to Job, like the processor, Joseph is undergoing God does everything out of love. Oh my God. That is why when the wife of Job approached the husband and she requested that the husband that they cast God so that they may die, you know, the man was very quick to answer and correct that mistake. Hallelujah. You know, shall we only receive the good things from the Lord and not the bad ones? My God, hallelujah. You know, because he is God all the, all the times. He's a God of seasons. He's a God when it is okay and when you feel as a human being it is not okay you know one thing i have noted church with the time the few years i have served god fully in uh, whatever people call the full-time ministry I, I have noted in my life that you know sometimes we judge god harshly i remember one time you know the lord rebuked me and told me you people judge me harshly many other times we judge god harshly and, and you know at one time you when you sit back you'll ask yourself who else would have gone through what the lord has enabled me to go through hallelujah who else who else did I want to go through? Joseph, who else did you want, did you want God to take through the process you have gone through? And, and let me tell you, God that can never bring anything your way until he knows you are capable, you know, the grace he has given you, it is able to carry you through. Because why? He is a father and he's a loving father in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray tonight that you may dominate this service. This is your gathering. We are your people. Take charge of this service. And my father, let your counsel prevail let your goodness and masses be our portion let your will be done even as we gather online tonight we are taking charge of these platforms my father we are taking charge we are taking charge of the internet we are taking charge of every view we are taking charge of every comment and lord we pray that your word may come forth as you have commanded and my father as you have sent it oh jehovah god that it may be able to edify the body of jesus christ father we are gathered in 
in your name. Hallelujah. The Bible says there are people who gather, but they don't gather in your name. But tonight, oh God, we gather and we gather in your name. Hallelujah. Father, this is your meeting. We are your people. And even those who are going to listen to this word after us, after this live broadcast, we thank you, Father, because your word will touch somebody's lives. Your word will cause somebody to arise from this night in boldness, my God, and do what we are supposed to be doing in this hour in the name of Jesus. Father, I decree and declare this is our time. Hallelujah. It is a season of the sons of God to be manifested. And my Father, thank you because we shall be manifested in your power. We shall be manifested in your authority. We shall be manifested in your goodness, Lord. We shall be manifested in your masses, my Father. It is not because of any of our goodness, oh Lord, but because of your masses that are new every morning. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we worship you. We give you praise and we adore your name. Father, I submit myself under your authority. Lord, let your Holy Spirit speak through me to the church, my God, and to the nations of the world, that the name of Jesus may be glorified in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So we are talking about, you know, the demands of God. Or, you know, uh, the Spirit of God did not tell me the demands. He spoke to me about the demand. So it is one thing. It is one thing. Just like the way we have the fruit of the Spirit, uh, we have the demand. You know, it is the demand. What is the demand of God for this hour? What is God demanding? What is His demand? Hallelujah. And we saw from day one, can I read for us uh, what we saw from day one? Uh, that the demand, you know, a demand is, uh, you know, is to insist on, on something so firmly, is to insist on something. So what is our Father insisting on? He can only insist what is written is in His Word, because He cannot, God is His Word, so He can never outdo the Word of God is His will. So the demand of God right now is in His Word. Hallelujah. And we saw the demand number one is that He's still seeking as you come on board and it encourage my life and my ministry kindly share this broadcast i have not seen you uh Nashua sharing mamporin i cannot see you sharing wairimo wainaina welcome i cannot see people sharing kindly share this word mama ma, ma, jenny gashara kindly share the broadcast irene share the broadcast i honor love all of you and encourage my life and ministry let us reach out to as many people as you as we can by the grace of god hallelujah so the demand is insisting on something so firmly to to an extent that my brethren as sons of God we have no other alternative we don't have any other way hallelujah and I told you from day one the only way that we have is Jesus we don't have any other way as sons of God we don't have an alternative I told you thank you uh, Helen Wanjugu kindly share the broadcast I told you from day one the people of the world seem to, to be having so many other I know uh, so many ways somebody can opt to go to a witch another one can opt to go to you know to, to consult from so many other places but let me tell you my brethren when the power of, of one of their gods fell I, you know I know of a, of, of a certain nation in the world that, that they have so many supermarkets of gods that when you, you buy a god and that god goes to your house and grows old you know maybe after six months you, you throw that, that god in the river and you go back to the same supermarket and buy a new god hallelujah we have such kind of a nation have been there so I know and now or listen to this we don't have an alternative you know it is god it is god and god so our father is still laying a demand that we worship him that we worship him are you hearing servants of god it is not about gathering for services it is not just attending any conference that time is over we are not called to be anywhere every time it is time to be where the lord has ordered ourselves the bible says that god orders the steps of the righteous we must adhere to that counsel we must purpose to be where god has ordained for us in this hour my brethren thank you Holy Spirit. the spirit of god now has taken over this service we must allow the spirit of god the bible says uh, you know when the spirit of the truth comes that is what jesus is telling the apostles uh, he's going to teach you all things hallelujah he's going to remind you all things hallelujah so we are reminded we are in a class even as we live right now we 
are in, a, in the school of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Men can teach you and they bring forth their philosophies. But let me tell you, church, when the Spirit of God has taught you alive, oh my God, it is well with your life. Because whatever flows out of you, oh my God, and whatever comes out of your speech, whatever comes out of your data, as Colossians is saying, you know, as Paul is speaking to the church in, the, in Colossians, he's saying, whatever you do, either in deeds or in words, let it be done and let it be said in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So we don't have that ability as human beings. It is only the Spirit of God that is able to teach us because the Bible says that he searches the deep things of God. And you know, when, 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 when we abide in the vine, when we abide in the Lord, the Spirit of the truth is able to teach us, is able to counsel us. So we don't make mistakes. Can I tell somebody tonight, we have become of age. Oh my God, turn to your neighbor, tell your neighbor, we are now of age. Oh my God, we made some brothers before, but today we cannot make them. Why? Because inside us, as you are dealing with us, we are listening to the inner voice. We are listening to the counsel of the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Oh my God, it is not time to praise any man. It is time to purpose to praise the God who has called us and he kept us alive in such a moment by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Do I have true, do I have worshipers in the house tonight? Hallelujah. Worshipers of God. Let us worship him in truth and in the spirit. Uh, demand number two from the heart of God is that we love each other. That is what we saw yesterday. I bear with my time. I'm not harassed. I'm here to deliver the word of God. Even if we go up to 1 a.m., I have no issues. I am good to go. I have to, to recover my time. <laughs> <laughs> with God. Now listen, I, sorry I was setting the gadgets today for myself. Hallelujah. The youths are occupied, so I did it for myself because I have to do this. Now listen, now love one another. This one has to be done. And the Bible says when you love one another, hallelujah, the world will see and know that you belong to me. We, It's not about what we are saying. you know. And love, as we saw the word of God yesterday, love comes with even what we do to our brethren. Hallelujah. Love comes with what we do. And we led 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and we saw, we broke down what, what love is all about. So what, and um, can, can I confirm this from the Spirit of God? The Spirit of God is telling me to confirm this. I'm not talking about demands. I'm not talking about demands. I'm talking about the demand. It is one thing. So, uh, you know, it's like the way we have the fruit of the spirit that is divided in nine components. So what God has sent me to say for these five days, it is one thing. So you cannot do one and leave the other. Are you here in this church? You cannot be a worshiper of God and then you have no love in you. Okay? So it is one thing. So if you, you have this one, you must have this other one and you must have all of them, the five of them, as the spirit of God has dropped them in my spirit in the name of Jesus. So, then number three, what is the Lord saying? What is the other component of the demand of God in this hour? Hallelujah. Oh my God. Church, hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So demand, the component, another de uh, component of demand is occupy until I come. I didn't do whatever you are, you know what to do. I didn't do something very good. Hallelujah. De uh, the other thing is we must occupy until he comes. That is written in the word of God. So that's why I'm saying the demand of God in this hour, you know, is not outside his word. It is inside his word. And I'm about to say something tonight by the authority in the spirit of God and I know the Spirit of God is going to help me, you know, where he's going to help me to deliver this word. Listen to me, church. You know, we have very good tendency. We have very good tendency. And I want you to check all over the world. Many of us, we have very good tendency of receiving the word of God, the word of prophecy, and reading the scriptures. But we are very poor. Many of us are very poor in execution. And this is where you find many of us sitting back and saying, I'm waiting for confirmation. Listen to me, Chad. When God spoke to Abraham, there was no any other confirmation. Listen to me, Chad. When God spoke through dreams to Joseph. There was no any other confirmation because listen to me, my brethren, when God has spoken, his word is him and that word is forever settled in heaven. Listen to me, somebody, when God instructed or spoke to uh, to, to, uh, to Gideon, uh, you know, uh, you know, and they had a journey to confirm it is God. Listen to me, when, God, when, uh, when, uh, when uh, Gideon began on the assignment, he did not wait for any other confirmation. So God began a journey 
encounter with Gideon and he was instructing him where it was supposed to be instructed. Hallelujah. Now, for many of us who are still waiting and God already spoke, it is no time to sit back. Are you hearing this church? It is no time to sit back. When Jesus was baptized and the, you know, the voice came from heaven through the dove, you know, the dove came and the voice came from heaven. Hallelujah. Don't misquote me. I have corrected. Hallelujah. I have framed it properly. Now, listen to this. When that voice came, this is my son, you know, who are, in whom I am priest, you know, obey him. Hallelujah. That was enough. And what do we see? What do we, dis, what do we see after that? After the temptation of Jesus in the wilderness for 40 days, what do we see after that? The ministry began. It is a ministry that was being birthed in the whole of that process. It is a ministry that was being birthed. And that was enough backup of what happened in the ministry of Jesus from there going forward in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. It is, you know, it was enough confirmation, you know, for the people who are still seated. You know, God spoke to you 10 years, 5 years, and the word of God has been repeated twice, thrice. You know, somebody was asking me, woman of God, why is this word, why has God repeated this word to me more than three times? Hallelujah. Because you are not acting on the word. We are not, the, the word does not, if you look at the word of God, in the book of John chapter 2, you know, many is, is, is telling the servants, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Rikata Ramazi hallelujah so and what do we see you know there was an action immediately from that voice when jesus instructed it was acted upon and what do we see we see resort listen to me church we are busy covering and hiding in the prayer centers on prayer mountains when heathens and the ishmaelites are busy occupying occupying and thank you the, the spirit of god is taking me to the book of nehemiah after you have prayed then there is the physical action Action. Esther, after you have prayed, there is the, fish, the physical action. And you see somebody like Esther, she's risking even her life. Faith calls for risking. Hallelujah. Oh my God. What you see some of us do, it is risking. We, we, we are not waiting for anybody to create a platform for us. You know, create a platform for yourself. If God has called you an international evangelist, begin evangelizing even in your own bedroom. Hallelujah. Begin, begin evangelizing on the streets. When you board a flight, when you board a, 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 a ship, or a, when you board a train, begin speaking the word of God from anywhere. You know, I hear the Lord say, you know, begin from anywhere. Right now, church, there is no more time to sit down. Begin from somewhere. Hallelujah. Begin. Arise and act on the word that has already come from the mouth of the Lord. Hallelujah. And let me tell you the truth. The backup we are enjoying, it is so fulfilling. We see that in the book of Esther. It is so fulfilling because when you act after prayer, then you see the results. What are you still waiting for? Another day I was asking a group in my life, what the Lord is asking, what are you still waiting for? Hallelujah. But in my eyes, Jesus has called you and he has told you by, you know, by your faith, it is done. What, do you still want to sit? Do you still want to sit, you know, on the mat? Throw it away. Move forward. Hallelujah. The man at the pool for that eight years, take up your mat and go. Do you still want to sit there and wait for another confirmation? Yet uh, the voice of God has already come forth. Hallelujah. Arise and take up the mat. Jesus, you know, Jesus did not help that man. He told the man, arise, take up your mat, obey that word, execute that word. Hallelujah. And can I tell us tonight, we are occupying until he comes. Can I tell you, can, can I go back to this? <laughs> Thank you. I like it when the spirit of God is, you know, has taken over. So uh, occupying simply means to inhabit, to live in or to settle. Are you seeing this? It simply means to inhabit, to live in, or to settle. You know, it, it is to fill up, to use, you know, a, a space or time to engage or employ, you know, the mind, energy, attention. Are you seeing this? You are engaging your mind, your energy. That is something physical and attention. That is what, why we have to focus right in this hour. It is holding possession, you know, off by settlement or dwell in. Sorry, and this, you know, this, 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 this requires our effort, you know, our time and our attention. 
Hallelujah. You know, it requires the three things. Are you seeing this? If you are talking about occupying until I come, it requires our effort. The word has already come. Whatever the, the Lord was is the written word. Whatever is written, whatever has come from the prophets. And you know, let me tell you, my brother, God fulfills the word from the mouths of his prophet. I mean, of his servants. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, man of God. Watching from dollar. Thank you, my apostle. Now, listen to this. You know, God, for, God fulfills the word from the mouth of his servants and let me tell you it is now time that you will know whether the prophetic word you had whether it was from god or not because we have entered into a time of physical fulfillment hallelujah so it will engage your effort it will engage your time it will engage your attention this is what we are seeing in the life of hannah when the time of god came the spirit of god is ordering her, her life in, into the temple so it is engaging her effort no, there is no Asha there. There is no prophet to see for her there. It, it, no, it, it is about her and God. It, and God propels her. In the spirit of God, you know, pushes her to go and appear in the temple. You know, to pour her heart there. And what do we see? Her time is also, you know, involved here. Hallelujah. And her attention. You know, when the man of God is speaking to her, you know, her attention is there. That's why we see when 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 Ella spoke to Hannah, we see even her countenance is changing. Why? You know, her attention was involved in the whole of this matter. When the king is speaking to Nehemiah, you know, his attention is, is so much involved. Hallelujah. That's why he was able to act, you know, promptly. Hallelujah. You, you know, when, when Mordecai is instructing Esther, you know, her attention, her time, hallelujah, her effort. Oh my God, hallelujah. The people who are still waiting for other people to help you. I came to say, you know, you, 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 you are, you, you are, you are, you are, you, you are, you, you are, no, you are, you are forced. You know, the, 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 the help that is supposed to push you to the destiny that God ordained for you is number one is God. So unless somebody is prompted by God, nobody has your help. You know, the support mechanism and the support system of the, of the church of Jesus Christ is God himself. Hallelujah. So after we have prayed, after we have labored in fasting and praying, church, we cannot just sit back again in our houses and wait for other prophets to come and prophesy. Attend a conference after a conference. Look for prophet after prophet. Move from church to another church. Can I rebuke us tonight? Can I rebuke us tonight because God has given me that authority? <laughs> now listen to this church. You see, the religious guys, the religious guys, including Zacchaeus, including Nicodemus, including Jairus, you know, and the religious guys of our days. These people are very consistent. They are very consistent when it is their time to worship, like the, the, our Ishmaelites, when it is time for their worship on Friday. Let me tell you, they even close the doors of their businesses and they dress accordingly to the day of their worship. They are so committed. They are very consistent. They don't forget the hours when they're supposed to wake up at whatever time they do it. They, you know, I hear the Spirit of God say, yes, <laughs> thank you, Animo. I, I hear the Spirit of God say, they are so disciplined. The religious Guys, it is religion, yes, but they are so disciplined. Can, can I tell you what the scripture says? Unless our 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 faith, you know, our belief surpasses that of the of the Pharisees, you know, it has to surpass that of the Pharisees. We forget the kingdom of God. We forget it. It has to surpass this. You know, they are so devoted in their giving. They are so devoted in their tithing. They are so devoted in their timing, their effort, and their commitment. They are so devoted. That's why in the Bible I told you yesterday, one man built a synagogue. You know, a whole synagogue himself alone for the people. So when he, when he has you know he has requested Jesus for his attention, actually it is not him who is who is saying to Jesus, I have built a synagogue for the people so come and attend to my need it is people who are saying this man deserves that jesus attends to his life because why he has built up as a synagogue one man for us hey hallelujah i do you know how pentecostal people are stingy even to god himself you know they are not and let me tell you the truth you know we we, we shall never outrule the principles of the word of god let the heathen continue giving it is blessed to give than to receive that is for everybody you know and let me tell you no, those scriptures will never change they will that is why someone like uh, cornelius 
you know, God is seeing from heaven. Because why? He was a giver. He was praying and he was a giver. Yet he was not born again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, uh, we, we must arise to the occasion. We must, so the demand of God is that we arise. We arise now. The season is ripe. Are you hearing me, church? Thank you so much. Are you hearing me, church? The season is ripe. The hour is now. We have a grace period of some seven years, from 2023 to 2030. A very prime moment for the church to be rightly positioned, even in occupation, you know, in the, in the nations of the world. This is where, let me tell you, my brethren, where you applied for a job and they forgot your CV, without any struggle, they will call you. Where you're supposed to be promoted, you'll be promoted. Why? Because the season is ripe to favor the body of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So many of us have been waiting on God and, and uh, the Lord, you know, on, on, the, on God, uh, on, on what he said and what he has promised, you know, to become a reality. Hallelujah. So the Lord is saying, arise, move and become. So the word will be fulfilled as you move. Hallelujah. Are you seeing what Hannah is doing? Are you seeing what Gideon is doing? Are you seeing what Esther is doing? Are you seeing what Joseph is doing? Hallelujah. There is a movement. There is, you know, there is an arising. There is a movement and there is a becoming in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So the Lord says it is that time for his people to venture out by faith. My brethren, we must venture out by faith. If God promised you a business, kindly register the business. Hallelujah. If God promised you nations, don't go back to the prayer center. Kindly, you know, go back, sit back in your house and ask the Spirit of God, you know, how do I go to nations? You need a passport. You need whatever. Get the documents ready. Hallelujah. If God promised you a car, get the driving license ready. Go and train. Hallelujah. Go and train. I hear the Spirit of God say, can we equip ourselves ready for, for our season? Can we get ready? Hallelujah. Can we get ready? Rikata Ramazik Church, can you get ready? Hallelujah. Don't just leave. Oh my God, just, don't just sit there and wait. That season is over. How the season is over. Oh my God. Hallelujah. So many of us are not able to become because of fear. And we fear even risking. Faith calls for risking. Hallelujah. Can you see what is happening? How did the, how did the Bartimaeus fit in the, in, the, in the shifted season in his life? We see him shouting. He's, he's doing something extraordinary. We see something extraordinary, you know, that has no experience of any man with the woman with the issue of blood. Risking. Hallelujah. Esther is risking. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Faith calls for risking. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Hallelujah. So, so, so church, we cannot just sit there and watch and wait for things to happen. Things do not just happen. They are made to happen. Are you see, are you hearing this church? Things are made to happen. Esther is making things to happen. She has prayed and God is with her. The favor is there. Her name means favor. But she's causing this to happen. Hallelujah. Joseph is causing things to happen by engaging the butler and the baker. That is causing things to happen. You may, you, you know, uh, those people do not have the spirit of God. At least now we have the spirit of God. Hallelujah. We know how to be dead of the spirit of God to cause things to happen. So shun out fear. Do not fear when there is a prompting of the spirit of God in your life. Even to call somebody, kindly call them. Do not fear how they are going to react. You know how they are going to react. To react is not your issue. Kindly just move. Hallelujah. You know, just move. Hallelujah. So, uh, so the, the 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 Lord. I mean, uh, you know, uh, we see in the book of Genesis chapter 13, we see, you know, there is what God had kept for Abraham. You know, he's telling him, leave your people, leave everything, go to a lad, go to a lad, I'm going to show you. So Abraham obeys, he's ex executing that word. So they got somewhere in Genesis chapter 13, I'm cutting it short, sorry, because of time, pardon me. <coughs> sorry. Then, you know, in Genesis chapter 13, sorry, 
uh, and we see, you know, there is God is now showing Abraham after he separated with Roti. God is now showing Abraham what he had in store for him, and he's telling him, you know, look here, turn north, turn south, turn east, turn west. See the whole of this land I have given you, and not now that word has come now as a fulfillment. This is what I have in store for you, Regina. You are a prophet to nations. Hallelujah. So do I still for up? Do I still wait? Do I still wait in my house and wait for nations to come and get me here? <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, you know, Regina, you are a business person. So do, do I wait for God to come and bring the business in my house? God does not work like that. So he's telling Abraham, turn, see this, see this and see this. And then he's telling him, after you have seen, walk over. There is your effort needed here. There is your time needed here. Hallelujah. Walk over. Hallelujah. Walk over. Occupy. Take charge. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And you see, uh, you, 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 let me tell you, my brethren, you know, the word we have heard, the promise of God and what we have heard from God is enough to build your faith. For the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and by hearing by the word of God. When God says, as I've spoken to one of you here, you know, that you are going to get married. You know, it does not matter how old you are. God says you are going to get married. So begin preparing yourself for that. Hallelujah. Begin thanking God. Many of us are still fighting battles with what God already said and what God said it's a done deal hallelujah so we begin giving God thanks and the Bible shows us in the you know uh, Paul is talking to the to the son when the prophetic word has come it is not for you to uh, to just rejoice and relax wage you know fight a good fight wage you are with that word hallelujah wage you are with that word until that word becomes a reality hallelujah so you don't just sit there and testify you know I have been told uh, you know this one has been say, uh -uh. You, you don't relax you don't lose the nut, the spiritual nut. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. So can I read for last this? Um, Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. Verse, uh, you can read from verse, uh, uh, you can read from uh, uh, verse 11 down there. Luke chapter, you can read all of it from verse, uh, I mean from verse 11. Luke chapter 19. Um, I have my Bible here, so I have so many scriptures, and I'm going to read all of them so that we can understand what the Lord is saying. So we are occupying until he comes. So if you have relaxed, you are not there yet. Hallelujah. So um, uh, uh, the Bible says, so this is a story. Uh, this is a story from verse 11. It's uh, the parable of the minas. You know, uh, the Bible says, you know, talks about these people. A certain nobleman went into a far country uh, to receive a kingdom, and he gave ten of his servants some money and to do uh, to, to 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 do business. You know, and he told them, do business and do, do business till I come. Hallelujah! But the citizens were not comfortable with that, and the Bible says the man returned in verse fifteen. So this man is returning, having received the kingdom, uh, uh, and then he he commanded that those servants uh, whom he had given. The the money uh, to be called to him that he might know how much even every man had gained by training hallelujah had gained by uh you know by by trading so what do we see he told them you know occupy do business you know there is an assignment until i come that means there was no provision of relaxing whether there were battles where there was opposition the owner of the money the master did not give them a provision of relaxing hallelujah so the bible says uh, then the first say must the first came saying minus you know and and ten minus uh, the one said uh, the minus he was given you know or the the money he was given it and ten minus and he said to him well done go a good servant um you know because you have been faithful in very little have authority over ten cities are you seeing this have authority over ten cities so where are we failing where is the cut off we are not faithful with the little hallelujah maybe god gave you a kiosk and god had promised you a supermarket so your faithfulness with your soul, with your might, and with your, with your, with your, you know, love the Lord God with your soul, with your might, and with your what? With your everything. Hallelujah. So if you're not faithful with the kiosk, 
then the supermarket will not come. So this one is being told, take over cities, 10 cities. And the second one came, and the story goes on like that. Hallelujah. The other one came. So the other one, uh, the other one said, for I feared you because you are I know an assured man. You collect what you did not sow. So this are the last one has done nothing. So what do we see? There is no inheritance for him. So uh, at the end of the day, what do we see? There is a reward. You know, the Bible says in verse 26, for I said to you that uh, to everyone who has will be given and from him who does not have even what he has will be taken away from him are you seeing this now listen to this this is why some of us we have been beginning something and because we lack faithfulness we, we lack the ability of continuity you know so we see that see things are transferred to others and your life is not going on now we must maintain the faithfulness to labor to the end and the, the, the everybody here, I'm talking about being faithful in the do's and the don'ts of our kingdom in whatever we are doing until he comes. We cannot lower the guard. We cannot lower the guard. Hallelujah. You can read again Matthew 24. Matthew 24. Matthew just behind there after Luke, Mark. Yes, Matthew 24. Matthew 24 and verse 46. Verse 46 and verse 7, the Bible says, Blessed is the servant whom his master, when he comes, will fight so doing. Hallelujah. Not to those who did. Now, the story you tell us, I used to sing. We don't want to hear the story I used to sing. We should be singing now. Hallelujah. There should be continuity. As long as you are alive, there should be no cut off. Hallelujah. There should, be, there should be no cut off. The Bible says, verse 47, I should, I said to you that he will make him ruler over all his goods. Are you seeing this? Hallelujah. So uh, whatever we are, many things that we are looking for, even on prayer mountains, is because we are not occupying. We are not doing what we are supposed to be doing. We are not occupying. Hallelujah. Some of us gave up. You know, when, uh, when some people shouted and, uh, you know, when they intimidated us, we gave up, we threw away the towels. Kind of go and pick them where you threw them <laughs> and begin afresh. Hallelujah. So it is faith plus actions. You know, the word has come, that word, the promise of God that has come, it has built your faith. So now put that faith in action. Church, there is no time to sit down. Put that faith in action. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 20, 28 and verse 1, Proverbs 28 and verse 1. A righteous person is as, as built as a lion. Hallelujah. Do you know lion in the, in the animal field has no challenger. Lion has no challenger. So in this world, my brethren, as long as you're righteous, you know, you have no, you have no challenger. This is why we are seeing the people who walked right with God. You know, they had no challengers. Even the people who tried to come and challenge them, God came through for them. Hallelujah. So we need boldness. We, we need to shun away fear. We need to drive away fear. Hallelujah. We are seeing the Ishmaelites, my God, and a and, and heathen. They are busy occupying. They are busy building flats and, you know, real estate. They are busy risking. They are busy occupying. Hallelujah. We shall not take over, you know, the right. The Bible says the wicked are piling their wealth for us. We shall not take over when we are just hiding in prayer centers. Church, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. We must come out and possess our possessions Obadiah chapter Obadiah verse 17 we have some poss we have some possessions to possess and we cannot do that when we are not actively physically doing something Rikata Ramazia Hallelujah. So a righteous man. So if you are struggling with the fear, kindly check your walk of faith. A righteous man is as bold as a lion. Hallelujah. So it is time. And, uh, you know, uh, the Bible says, you know, the, the, the power of life and death is in our tongue. So it, it's in what we say and in our confession. But occupying cause for physical actions, occupying cause for your effort, it requires your time. It requires your attention. Hallelujah. Occupy until I come. Hey, Jesus did not just leave them where they were. He told them there is continuity. You know, there, 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 there are some miles to cover. There are some distances to cover. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. So we must do all it takes. This, I'm reading as the Spirit of God led me. I was writing in the Spirit. So the Lord is saying we must do, do all what it takes to be able to become that which he preordained. If the Lord has spoken something, you know, you know, you know, 
If the Lord has spoken something, Kaide, do not fear from this night. I came with a word of encouragement. Go for your supermarket. Go for that school. Go and register it. Hallelujah. Begin even if it is in your bedroom with one child. Hallelujah. Begin somewhere. God will back your faith up. Hey, Sharama Zika and Begin somewhere. Don't just sit. Are you hearing me, church? That time is over. We don't have much time left. Actually, the Bible says we work when it is still daytime. For the night has come when none of us will be able to work anymore. Shine fear. Arise and work. Hallelujah. Amen. By the grace of God. And the Bible says God blesses the labor of our hands or the work of our hands. So let us move and we are going to become that which God will day. Church, what we are fearing. In these end times, what we are fearing, the Lord is saying, or what we have been waiting for, you know, uh, that, 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 you know, that word, you, you have been waiting, you know, to come to pass, you know, and what we are fearing, and, and, you know, those things cannot hinder the word of God from becoming a, 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 a reality. You know, the Bible says in uh, Isaiah chapter 58, when God has spoken his word, that word can never go back to him void until it has accomplished the purposes to which, uh, to which he sent it forth for. Hallelujah. So uh, nothing can stop the word of God from becoming a reality. Even your enemies, even the, you know, nothing. And that's why I'm saying, kindly concentrate right. Leave your enemies alone. That is all what they know what to do. Backbiting and slandering. Let them slander. Let them, don't even bother. Hallelujah. Let those who hate you, hate you. That's all what they know to do. Focus right. Concentrate right. We have an assignment. We have a work to, we, some mile, we have some miles to cover. Hallelujah. Obadiah is just one chapter, Irene. So it is Obadiah verse 17. Hallelujah. So God is his word. Hallelujah. And the word of God is very active. The word of God is very active. It is reality. The word of God is present at all times. That is God. He's a never present help. That's what the Bible says. So that word is forever set on heaven. Psalms 119 and verse 89. And God falls up his word to perform it. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 12. That's why Ecclesiastes will tell you in, in, its, in, in its time. Time, you know, God will, will, you know, when it is that time, hallelujah, God will hasten it. You know, when it is time for the word to become a reality, this is what we are seeing in the life of Hannah. There is, you know, there is hastening. It is go and uh, let it be done unto you. Uh, you know, you know, and that is it. The season of Hannah has just shifted. Hallelujah. Nicod I, I mean, uh, you know, uh, somebody like Batimaeus, you know, I love Batimaeus so much. You know, uh, go your faith. You know, there is, there is speed. You know, the man at the pool, take up your mat and go. The man at the, you know, uh, you know the bride man in, in John chapter 9, go and wash in Shuruam. There's no time to waste here. It is a done deal. Women with the issue of blood, the Bible is immediately. Hallelujah. That is it. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. So it is time. And the Bible shows us it is that now set time for what God has promised any one of us in this hour, in this season, particularly from 2023 up to 2020, we are going to see, you know, things we prayed for years back, you know, quickly becoming a reality. Hallelujah. And, and let me tell you, the process God has taken you or where you are coming from, God was preparing us for this hour. Let me tell you, my brethren, we are about to rejoice. The Bible says, you know, there are things that God has kept for us who love him. Things we have not seen. We have not even heard about them. They have not even entered into any man's heart. You know, we are about to see things unfold. Who would have said that Joseph would have become a prime minister in a foreign country? Who would have said Esther, an orphan girl, would have become, oh my God, a queen, you know, in a foreign country? Where she not she did not even have documentaries uh, who would have said a shepherd boy, oh my God, would have become a king in Israel. God is a God of times and seasons. Uh, I am sent as a voice of God to us this night uh, to let us know we are already in the shifted season. We are already in the shifted season. Uh, come on, somebody arise in your house, arise in your ministry, arise uh, in your nation. Uh, take charge of this shift. 
shifted the season. The season has already shifted. My God, God is new, doing a new thing. God is, you know, causing new things, you know, to spring forth in our destinies. God is bringing forth the new, new, new territories for us to occupy. God is bringing forth new connections. Hallelujah! It is I hear the Lord say, you know, He's ushering us into some new dimensions. We have not been that way before. This is purely the working of the Lord. Come on, somebody, if you're waiting for somebody to usher you in, into something, I came to prepare you. Arise by faith. Arise by faith. As long as the Spirit of God is saying something, kindly arise and move. Hallelujah. You are going to become that which God has preordained for us in this hour, in the name of Jesus. And I hear the Lord say, whatever has, has, has opposed you before, this time around, it has to give way. Why? Because it is time of God for us. Hallelujah. So it is time for us, you know, uh, it is time for the church. So I'm talking about we are occupying until he comes. So this is another demand of God. So we have no time to relent. We have no time to slow down. Those who slowed down, you don't pray anymore. You know, in your usual prayer times, you don't pray anymore. You don't fast anymore. You don't pay your tithe anymore. You eat the whole of your salary. You don't give your offerings anymore. Kaidre, pick up your mat and go. <laughs> You know, be restored back to your normal life as a son of God. Do what it takes. Do what you're supposed to do. Hallelujah. Do what you are supposed to do as a son of God in the name of Jesus. Why? The book, the Bible says in the book of Isaiah, chapter 61 and verse 4. Amen. It is time for us to repair. Can I read for you this? I have so many scriptures and I'm going to read them. I will not leave this platform until I have read all the scriptures that I have for us tonight. We are not going anywhere until we hear what the Lord is saying. Because some of us from this night, you must go and begin that supermarket. Even if you are going to begin from your table room, advertise those things from your table room. With the little capital you have, you must become. Hallelujah. Listen, you know, uh, God God is not giving uh, the children of Israel, uh, you know, Canaan that is vacuum, you know, that is a vacuum. You know, it is occupied. Canaanites are there. What, what is God saying? As I continue increasing you, I will drive these people slowly. Hallelujah. So if we sit back and we wait for things to happen miraculously, you know, God is a miraculous God, yes. He's a supernatural being, yes. Hallelujah. But then the children of Israel had to step in Canaan for God now to dispossess. Hallelujah. The Canaanites from that land that was a possession for the children of Israel. Oh, hallelujah. So if you don't begin your kiosk, if any, if any of you are beginning from your, from, from your bedroom, it is okay. Begin somewhere. <laughs> but by the way, can I say this as a prophetic voice by the, the grace of God and with much humility? It is time. It is time. Don't fear beginning something. Kindly begin something. Do something. And you're going to see the backup of God that you have never seen before. Hallelujah. Let, let me tell you, can I say this? Because I'm authorized by God to say this. We are in a season where in the body, in the church of Jesus Christ, people are too selfish and they are too jealous. People are self-seeking. And you know, when you read about the perilous times and perilous people, that is where we are. So if you are depending on some on some of these people, I'm not talking about all of them. God has a remnant. If you are depending on somebody to open a door for you, you may wait forever. You may wait forever. You know, I had a friend many years ago who used to go international. And, you know, every time we joined our hands, she was telling me I was in this country. I was here. I was here. And, you know, she kept promising me, man of God, you know, you are anointed. I'll open doors for you. I will, hey, I will connect you here. I will call this. Even in my local nation, my, my own country, you know, she had all the connections. I will do this. Let me tell you, all those years, more than 25 years, she has never given me even a single ministerial connection. She's still going out. She's still there. And she's still my very good friend. So when I noted, I cannot hope in this one, I became wiser. We are good friends. But then let me tell you, I stood my ground by faith and I saw God. Hallelujah. And I saw God. 
Hallelujah. So maybe you have such kind of a friend. <laughs> so can we read Isaiah 60 or 61? Isaiah 61 and verse 4. This is now what we are supposed to be doing. The Bible says, can I read for us this? The Bible says, and they shall rebuild the old ruins. So we are called now to rebuild the old ruins. These are some of the places we are occupying. These some of the territories we are meant to occupy. They, 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 they are old ruins. They are suffering from old ruins. They are, they are there. They are affected by the old ruins. Hallelujah. They shall raise up the former desolations. So some of these places that we are going to uh, raise up the former desolations. Are you seeing this? The other thing is that we shall, we, we know we are going to repair. Uh, you know the ruined cities. We the the city, you know city, some cities are where God is giving us. They are so ruined. So we have to repair them. We are seeing God give Nehemiah a backup. So if God gave Nehemiah a backup and victory, so if God gives you a territory that is a ruined, where God has told you to go and put up your your your, your residential house. The prison is inhabited by witches and wizards. So will you stop going there? Will you stop going there selling, uh, you know, uh, is, uh, I mean Isaac in, in a, uh, Genesis 26, stay in the land I'm going to show you. Hallelujah. So even in those areas where witches and wizards have occupied, they don't own, own those places. Uh, the Bible says the earth and the fullness and it belongs to our father. So those disorate, those disorate, you know, those, those are, those are, I mean, are those ruined, um, you know, those ruined cities and those desolate places and those uh, ruined cities. Hallelujah. And those, you know, uh, the, the Bible says that this, uh, the desolation of many generations, you know, those, those are, you know, ruined cities. You know, those are, you know, uh, the Bible talks about they shall raise up former desolations. Hallelujah. And, and those ruined places. You know, we are going to repair them where repair is needed. Because let me tell you the truth. By all means, we must occupy until he comes. Hallelujah. And I'm not just talking. If you read the word of God in the book of Matthew 28, you know, 18, 19, 19, I love it, 19, 20. Go ye. So Jesus did not leave us to be stagnated where he left the apostles. There is, there is, there is an assignment. There is something to do. Hallelujah. So can you do what you ought to do? Can you do what you ought to do? What you are seeing me do here is what I ought to do. <laughs> this is where my, my life is. Hallelujah. So number one, it is time to repair the ruined cities. Number two, some of these places we are going to occupy, they are very ruined. So don't say God is not here. Kindly, you are son of God and you are representative of the kingdom. So repair. Number two, that's why, you know, when we talk about occupy, we are talking about your time, we are talking about your effort, we are talking about your attention. So repairing is coming with your time. You know, it is taking some of your time and some of your effort. Some of us want things to be served in a silver platter. It does not happen like that in the kingdom of God. God is a God of process. Uh-uh. Uh, you, people, do you know God had the ability to just give Abraham, drop a son, and Hannah, drop a son. But you know, they had to go through the process, go meet with your husband and your wife, you know, and things happen. That is it. There is a process. There is a process. Hallelujah. So the other, num the other thing is that time to possess our possession has come. That is Obadiah, Obadiah verse 17. Time to possess our possession. So possessing your possession, you not just pray and sit there. It, it demands for your effort and your time. If, the, if there is a prophetic word of God in your life, kindly act on that word. Execute that word. Hallelujah. So the other thing is it is time to possess or to take over the gates of our enemies. Kindly allow me to read for you this. Allow me to read for you Genesis chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22, verse 17 to 19. You know, we, um, Genesis chapter 22, verse 17 to 19. The Bible says, uh, the Bible says, uh, the Bible 17 to 19. Blessings I will bless you and multiplying I will multiply you, uh, your descendants as the stars of the heaven. So we are there. This is where we belong. So we are, we are among those descendants of Abraham that have been multiplied. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, at the stars of heaven, and as the sand which is on the seesaw, and your descendants shall possess the gates of their enemies. Hallelujah. My brethren, that scripture is there. We are the generation. We are possessing the gates of our enemies. Possessing the gates of our enemies after we 
have prayed and taken, taken care of the principalities and all those things. Then there is the effort and our time to go on the ground and possess the gates. Hallelujah. You cannot possess the gate when you're in Kataroni. And the prayer mountain. There is a physical action. <laughs> After you have spiritually done the part. This is what we are seeing with the Nehemiah. After prayer, then there is a physical part. And this is where many of us are stuck. The physical part. The execution part of it. Hallelujah. So it's an hour to take or to occupy, you know, our preordained territories. That time is here. Let us occupy or take charge of our preordained territories. You cannot take charge of what you don't know. That's why God is specified to Abraham. Whatever you can see, go walk over because that is what I have given you. Now you can take charge of your territory. Now, you don't just take charge of the territories in prayer. I take charge of my territories in prayer. Kindly go down and mark, put the borders. Put, I hear the Spirit of God say, physically put the border line. <laughs> So many of us, you know, have had no authority in many things as sons of God, but we must refuse that, you know, that others take up and enjoy what we, what is meant to be for us. Can I read for you a scripture that is going to scare some of us tonight? Can we read, uh, can we read the word of God in the book of Ecclesiastes? You know, you don't take your territories, uh, you don't own territories, Irene, when you are just confessing it. Uh, you know, physically, when you own a territory, you mark it, you, you mark the borderline. So church... We are occupying until he comes. So he's saying, you have spiritually waged war and do, done all those things. Spiritually, you have marked the territories. But then physically, come on the ground and put the border lines. Eh, eh. Hallelujah. <laughs> so can we read Ecclesiastes chapter 10? Can you see what is happening? As we are busy doing other things and, uh, and uh, do no covering up in prayer and fasting and all those things. Can we see, by the way, that's my lifestyle. You know, I love that. But then, can we, can we physically execute what we, are, what we are getting from the prayer closet? You know, if God has given, called you for the ministry of women, begin, even if you are going to begin with yourself as a woman, begin with you. Begin somewhere. Mark the borderlines. Hallelujah. So can we see this Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 7? Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 7. So the Bible says, I have seen servants on horses. We refuse. Turn to your neighbor, tell your neighbor. We refuse. That, that servants are, you know, the Bible says, I have seen servants on horses while princes walk on ground like servants. I, you know, I, I hear the Spirit of God say, it, you know, in my spiritual womb, there is an interchange that is not godly. There is an interchange in the world that is not godly. Hallelujah. No, there is an interchange that is not godly. So what is supposed to be ours? You know, the heathen are enjoying it. Yet they are using powers of darkness. Now we have come into that time. Esther chapter 9. Tables are now turned. We are in a shifted season. Kindly mark your borderlines physically. And God is going to give you a backup. Do not fear. They did not give you the promotion when you did it, when you needed it. They cannot sit on it from this night. They cannot sit on it from this night in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 6, the Bible is showing us that we have already been made, you know, we, are, we have already been made kings and priests. Are you seeing this? Kings rule with what? Hallelujah. And, and, uh, and, and the priests commands, rules and commands, kings decrees and declarations. Hallelujah. That is who we are right now. Hallelujah. By the grace of God. So the Lord is saying, it is time for the church to take over the seven mountains of influence. Not spiritual. Spiritually, we are already there. But then physically, we must arise. And let me tell you, we are going to see, you know, uh, manufacturing companies, you know, and, and innovations coming from the sons of God. We are going to see the positioning of the Esthers of our time, Josephs of our time, Daniels of our time, Deborahs of our time. Hallelujah. The Mary Magdalene's of our time, the Timothys of our time. We are going to see the rising of this. That season is with us now. So do not fear to venture out in whichever direction is ordering your steps now. Do not fear because why? You are going to enjoy the backup from the throne of grace. God is giving us a backup now. 
Hallelujah. So what do we see? It is time for the church to do that. Now, when Jesus delivered people in his ministry, you know, many other times he was telling them, arise, go, you know, and he was not following them up. Hallelujah. Arise, go. That means now uh, go and become what God preordained for you. Whatever was stagnating you, whatever was holding you down, that season is shifted. Are you seeing, are you listening to this chat? Now, when God says through the prophetic voices that we are already in the shifted season, we are already there. So it is us to guard those territories. It is us now to take charge of the season. So go and become the preordained. Occupy your territories. Hallelujah. You are not supposed to be seated here, but in my eyes. Go now and occupy physically your territories, what God preordained for you. Hallelujah. You know, there, there is who God made you to become. So it is in this now season, you are becoming the now who God preordained. Hallelujah. And let me tell you, my brethren, we are going to enjoy divine alignment, divine alignment, divine alignment. You cannot occupy and you cannot continue occupying until he comes, until you are divinely aligned. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. And, and I hear the Spirit of God say, there's going to be a lot of, you know, compensation. There's going to be a lot of recompense. Recompense. You know, we are going to encounter that and enjoy that by the grace of God. Hallelujah. So the season is already shifted, as I've already told you. It is our sole responsibility to be able to take charge of this season. So the Lord, they say, implement the agenda and, the, you know, implement the agenda and the demand of God for the hour. It is you and me to do it. Heaven is finished with the season. The season, God has already turned the tables. So when the tables were turned for Esther, what do we see? They don't again go to the prayer mountain and cover up there and sit there. They are acting physically on the ground on what is supposed to be acted. What do we see when the season is shifted for Joseph? He is now implementing the agenda of God there in Egypt. Physically, physical implementation. Hallelujah. So there is nothing else to wait for. Uh, the Lord has already given us all things. Uh, Second Peter chapter 1, 3 and 4. God has already given us all things pertaining to this life and godliness. Hallelujah. So we are lacking in nothing. As sons of God, we are lacking in nothing. Hallelujah. And even what you think you are lacking, we are lacking in nothing. The Bible says Peter is saying, Second Peter chapter 1, 3 and 4. God has given us all things pertaining to this life and godliness. So uh, go for what he has been, you know, what has been prophesied to you. Go for for it hallelujah go for it god is not slack you know i like this god is not slack in his promises you know second uh, peter 3 9 and verse 11 god is not slack in his promises god is not slack concerning his promises so whatever has been prophesied for you and into your life go for it now Hallelujah. The time is ripe. The season is now and the hour is now in the name of Jesus. So the Lord is saying, do it now. There is nothing to wait for. The time is now. Hallelujah. And you know, uh, when you look at the word of God in the book of Joshua 14, when the season was shifted in the life of Caleb, what do we see? He knows what belongs to him. Many of us have heard the prophetic word from the mouth of God, even from his servants, what belongs to us or what God has intended for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what do we see in the life of Caleb? Joshua is not even reminding him. For the people who are waiting to be reminded and to be to waiting for confirmations, hallelujah, you will wait forever. Go for whatever belongs to you. Joshua, I mean Caleb, is approaching Joshua. He's going for whatever belongs to him. He knew it is my season is shifted. It is not about age. It is not about my physical strength. Hallelujah. It's about the promise of God. There is a mountain. He knew, you know, he had the clarity. Why the prophetic word came into our lives is to let us have the clarity of what God is saying and what God has purpose for our, for our lives. So we are, we are not in confusion. We are sure. Come on, somebody. We are sure. We cut, we, there's no guesswork. My God, what you are seeing us do, we are not guessworking. That, that's why we don't struggle. We are not guessworking. We know who we are. You know, and that's why the Bible says in the book of Daniel 11 and that to be the Bible says, but be of that. The Bible says the people who know their God, these are the people who are going to grow strong and do exploit unless you know you are God. Hallelujah. So Caleb is talking about the promise of God in his life and he knows my time has shifted. My time has come. My season is shifted. Hallelujah. So nobody and nothing would have hindered him. 
Hallelujah. Even Joshua, the man of God, oh my God, he blessed him and he allowed him to take over. He, you know, he to possess his possession. Hallelujah. Nobody can stop you in this hour. Don't give us a testimony of how your boss is fighting you. Right now, there is a standard that is already raised far above every opposition for the remnants of God's people, far, far above every intimidation for the remnants of God's people. Hallelujah. Arise with that might and become the, the preordain of God in your destiny by the grace of God. So what do we see in the book of uh, Joshua chapter 21, 43 and 45, you can go and read for yourself because of time. Hallelujah. You know, God promised the children of Israel. The Bible says none of the word, you know, of what God had promised the children of Israel, none of those things that never came to pass. Hallelujah. Every word came to pass. I came to decree tonight by the grace of God. From this month of March going forward, what God has promised you, it shall come to pass. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Everything. Kaidre, execute what is already they say it. Do what you are supposed to do. Do what it takes and you do it as the Lord has aligned your life because why? You are his son. Hallelujah. Irene is this, uh, Joshua 21, 43 to 45. Hallelujah. So God is confirming, you know, is there 44? Is there 44? Can I read for you there? Is there 44? Can I show you something? The people who say God is, uh, does not have a remnant. God has his true servant. That's why you should be very careful of what, you know, God is commanding us to say in this hour. Because we are messengers. We are messengers and there are so many out there. Is there 44? Is there 44 and verse 26? So the Bible says, says who confirms the word of his servant and performs the counsel of his messengers hallelujah who says to jerusalem you shall be inhabited to the cities in judah you shall be built and i will raise up her waste places are you seeing this god confirms the word of his servant and performs the counsel of his messengers hallelujah so we are not just having you know time to waste here we are god's messengers hallelujah so occupy until he comes hallelujah so god is going to confirm the word the prophetic word that you have heard from the servants of god god is going to confirm that in the name of jesus christ so in conclusion this night god is going to help us we know that and god is going to make a way where there seems to be no way and god is going to make every crooked path straight and god is going to contend with our enemies so that we are not you know we are we are not worn down you know, God does not want us uh, this time to be worn down. God is helping us. God is helping us. Hallelujah. God is strengthening us. That's what we see in the book of Isaiah. He will strengthen us. He will help us. He will strengthen us. Hallelujah. So what is demand? The, the other, the, the, that, that component of the demand of God in this hour, we must arise and occupy until he comes. Hallelujah. We must, actually the Bible says, well, well, whoever will persevere to the end, we must, my, my brethren, Kaidre, if there is any prophetic word, if you write the, like the way I write, like this year I have two diaries, one for ministry and one for my, my personal life, you know, you write and note down what God is saying. Verse 26, I am Isaiah, 40, Isaiah 44 and verse 26, you know, you note down, Kaidre, go back to those records and begin claiming, begin calling those things forth, you know, begin calling calling them forth by faith hallelujah begin now acting on what you should act on don't wait for any other confirmation begin acting begin executing the word of god where you had it by the grace of god hallelujah so the word of the lord tonight is occupy until i come Hallelujah. So we are worshiping God in truth and in spirit. That one has to be there. We are loving each other unconditionally and genuinely and unconditionally agape love. Number three, we are occupying. We have no time to slow down. We have no time to just pray and wait. After prayer and waiting Nehemiah, there is a work ahead. And the favor is there. God has gone ahead of you. Esther, after prayer, three days and fasting, executed the agenda of God for the day in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So I don't know. You know, many of us have been saying, you know, God has taken too long before he comes. No, God came. When you heard his word is when he came. <laughs> Woo! When God spoke is when he came. Hallelujah. So go back there. Pick up that word and act by faith execute that word by faith Whew. hallelujah oh 
I want to leave it there. Hallelujah. So for the people who are still waiting for another prophet to prophesy, you may not encounter one in the recent days. Hallelujah. Okay, we are there, yes. We are there. But, but have you noted something, what God is doing with us, prophets, by the grace of God in this hour? God is causing us to teach the word, to teach. And we are prophesying and we are speaking, yes, once in a while. But majorly, you know, this gift is now edifying, healing the church, reconciling the church, building the church, because the foundation of the church is on the apostles and the prophets. You know, so God is doing a new thing. Hallelujah, by the grace of God. Let me tell you, my brethren, even if I see, by the way, even when I'm seated here, even when I look at your photo, I can just see and hear. But let me tell you, even when we see and we hear, if you are not able to act on the word and execute the word, we shall keep on hearing and seeing, but you are, nothing is moving on in your life. And this is why I tell people, before you shout, I receive, I receive, kindly sit back. And I begin executing the word of God. Hallelujah. Because you receive and you receive nothing. Nothing changes. Tomorrow you come to a service, you receive, you receive. Nothing is changing. Hallelujah. So where is the cutoff? Occupy until I come. Hallelujah. This calls for your effort. It calls for your time. It calls for your attention. That means it is something to be physically implemented. This is an, a, a component of the agenda of God that has to be physically implemented. The person in the parable where we read in the book of uh, you know, Luke chapter 19 is given 10 cities to occupy because he was able to labor to the end and bring some profit. Hallelujah. Kaidre, where you stopped singing, go back for your gift. Where you stopped giving, go back to your gift. Where you stopped praying, go back. Where you stopped fasting, go back. Where you stopped doing the business because the businesses are not doing well. And so you, you, you closed your shop, yet God had told you to start it. Kindly go back there. Go back there. We must occupy until he comes. Hallelujah. Because servants cannot drive on our horses. We are the princes. We must drive on our horses. Hallelujah. God bless you. Have yourself a good moment. We see you tomorrow for the fourth point of the demand of God by the grace of God. God bless you. Love you. Thank you.